If you're looking for more forehand power, then you've come to the right place. You're about to learn four proven ways to hit your forehand with insane power. So let's dive right into it. Hey, ET fam, this is Kevin Garlington, and today I'm gonna to give you one tip to help you get more power on your forehand. That tip is using your legs. Just think about it. If you wanna jump really high, what are you gonna do? You have to really use your legs. Just imagine jumping high in the air without using my legs. Not gonna work. The more power and thrust I wanna achieve, I wanna start pushing down on the ground to give me the ground force to use to come up. Now, how are we gonna use that on our forehand? We're gonna use that in the sense of just pushing down and pushing up right before you're, right as you're hitting. So how this is gonna work is that we don't wanna overdo it. We don't wanna get into a squat position, just a slightly lower position. You'll see all the pros right when they're about to hit, they load up a little bit and use their legs and the ground force to push up and create more acceleration. Now here's a quick tip that you can do, uh, a quick exercise that you can do and go out and uh, work on this. Simply get a ball and get used to being comfortable in a nice unit turn setup position where all I'm gonna do is as I'm about to swing, I'm gonna push up. So I'm pushing down and then pushing up. So once you get that down, you can just drop a ball and get used to pushing down and pushing up. And what you're gonna notice is you're gonna create more acceleration as you push up on the, uh, your legs. So that's how you can get more power on your forehand just by using your legs. Now that Kevin has shown you how to use your legs and ground force to create more forehand power, I'm gonna talk about length of swing, which is critical to creating racket head speed and transferring energy through the point of contact into the ball. The shorter your overall swing path is, the less potential you have to accelerate the racket. Joe Dinnifer, a good friend of mine, teaching pro maybe you've heard of, once I heard him say something really smart. He said, the path of the racket is a lot like a runway. Just picture an airplane wanting to take off. It needs space to get up to speed. And most amateur tennis players have very short, compact, uh, abbreviated motions. And so it's very difficult for them to create much racket head speed. So here's a drill that you can do to, to practice this and expand and extend the length of your swing. Start off. And you, you can do this in any stance, uh, square stance, semi-open or open stance. Semi-open tends to be the easiest, but what I'd like to see you do, try next time you're on the court, is move through your forehand swing, and for you righties out there, finish with your butt cap pointing to the left fence. And flip that if you're, if you're left-handed. So this, undoubtedly to you, is gonna feel exaggerated and accentuated, and that's the point at first, is to feel a longer, more flowing swing. And after a couple of shadow swings, drop yourself a ball and go to that same spot. Doesn't matter where the ball goes, don't even try to hit the ball hard at first. Just drop, swing, and go to that full long position. You'll actually see professional players finish in that position frequently. Uh, a lot of times it's exaggerated for us amateur players, but more than likely, you're not even close to that length of swing. And so practicing that exaggerated path will help you feel what it's like to elongate your swing, give yourself a longer runway, and make it easier for you to create more power. Next up, Megan is gonna talk about how to use that length of swing smoothly and loosely to really ramp things up to the next level. Hey, ET fam, today we're gonna go over a tip that's gonna be how your looseness of your swing can generate more power on your forehand. The first thing you're gonna think about is the grip. You wanna make sure that your grip is nice and loose, okay? If you are death gripping, like we like to call it, then what's gonna happen is you're actually gonna be really stiff when you come through and your finish is gonna be really close to your body and you're gonna actually be able to generate zero power. So the biggest thing is, is to make sure that you're nice and loose and your arm is loose, but it all starts with the grip, okay? One thing you can do is to shadow swing. When you're practicing your shadow swing, you wanna really focus on your hand and how tightly you are gripping the racket, okay? If you're nice and loose, your fingers are gonna be nice and loose on the racket, just like this. The biggest thing is, is that you're gonna be able to come through and stay relaxed. Now, each time you do this, you wanna focus on being a little looser, a little looser every single time. One thing you can do when you're shadowing also that will help a lot is where you're going to start with your racket. I'm a righty, so it's gonna be in my right hand, and I keep it loose enough that I finish with the racket in my left hand, okay? So I actually start with it in the right, and when I'm swinging through, I'm so loose that I'm letting the racket fly through the air to the left hand. Okay, the biggest thing is, is if you can really work on your looseness, you're gonna be able to generate so much more power through the momentum of your racket going through the air. 
Okay, so that's the biggest thing. I know you have been waiting for this one. We have talked about using your legs, the length of your swing, and staying loose to generate more power. But now I know, I know it in my heart that you wanna hear all about racket head acceleration. This is so fun. So we've got a drill for you today. Kevin is gonna be demonstrating with me and it is all about racket head acceleration. We talked about before having that runway that allows you the momentum to carry the power. Megan mentioned how much you don't wanna be stuck in a little chicken wing on your forehand. Your, your power will be cut short and we don't want that. So in order to make sure that we are finishing all the way over with our follow through, we are going to be demonstrating this out of the air drill. I'm gonna be standing in the middle of the court. I've got Kevin in front of me and he's gonna hit every ball out of the air. As far as this progression goes, you know that it's more important to start off slowly, master the skill before you start moving on to the next step, integrating that new skill. So we're gonna start a little slow, but don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna ramp it up. All right, Kevin, so just slow, nice. Kevin's fast. So Kevin is just keeping his racket loose, just like Megan said. The length of the swing is there, just like Ian said. He's using his legs, just like Kevin said. And he's using, he's finishing the racket, just like I said. Okay, now, this is not all that Kevin has, so we're gonna just kick it up a little bit. All right, here we go, Kev. Yes, let's go. Two more. Nice, let's go. Nice racket head acceleration. So we have combined all of those tips into one amazing drill for you. If you liked this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, comment below for more topics that you want instruction on and make sure that you click the link in the description down below or head to forehandactionplan.com and you can have all of the instructions to get a bigger forehand than ever. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a lesson. We'll see you next time. Today we're going to work on looseness of your forehand. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I've got to actually think about how I'm going to start it. <laughs> All right, kids, get your high pad on. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what's driven for high pad? Oh, <laughs> it must be good. Awesome <laughs> high pad. It's like a <laughs> And I'm going to make sure that. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Kevin, you're ruining my intensity. <laughs> we have used all of those tips combined to make... <sighs> if you're looking for more forehand power, then you've come to the right place. We're about to show you four ways to create... In forgot about the heaters, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs>